uh, what we're going to do, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. And uh, as you can see, I've shown you, this is me in the, the little basket there. I thought I'd start right at the beginning of my life, how I got here. And as you can see, that's the stork bringing me in. Um, you'll be glad to hear that I won't start actually that far back, four, four score and 20 years ago or whatever it was. But uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I got to Ariba. Uh, when my husband and I moved to Calgary, oh my goodness, almost 25 years ago now, a long time ago, we just loved the inner city. And at that time, we just thought this whole area was just a place of tremendous potential. And we looked at Ramsey, and we looked at Inglewood, and we looked at all these areas. But at that time, of course, we had a, a young daughter. And it just wasn't feasible to have her go to school here or to participate in the community. So we moved out into the burbs, and we've had lots of houses out in the burbs. And, uh, and then sort of our last house out there, we had transitioned into a condominium style, but it was really a house. It was uh, like a duplex and a large home. And we were both working in the inner city, and uh, we just absolutely hated the drive. It was just horrible. We just couldn't stand it. We thought it was just such a horrible issue. We both worked very long hours at work. And then we would just spend so much time commuting. It was just a nightmare. So we began to look. And just it, we looked for a long, long, long time. And we knew, too, it had to be the right thing. And when I first heard about this project, it was um, originally, as some of you know, going to be four towers here. And when I heard about it and where they were putting it in, in Victoria Park, and it was going to be this high-end condominium, I thought it was the craziest thing I'd ever heard in my life. I have to be quite honest. I thought it was absolutely insane. And uh, about a year went by, and we were still looking. As I say, it was a very long time. And I happened to get, and I don't know if any of you ever saw this, this booklet about homes and condos in Calgary. And in this booklet, now this booklet is dated November 2005, which I'm confident is exactly when I got this booklet. And in the booklet, there was an article about um, about Ariva, and it's called The Dreamer. And it's an interview with John Trout. And John talked about his vision for this particular area. And I read this, and when I read the story of what he thought about as a developer and as an investor in this area, and the dream that he had for this particular part of our city, I completely got it. I understood the potential that was here in the way that, of course, now most of us understand it quite easily. But at that point, it was just a completely unknown entity. It didn't make any sense. But I understood about the potential of the location, that it was really, in a sense, going to be a new community in an old area. I mean, there are no places virtually in the world, except in Calgary now we have two, with East Village and here, where you have an area that's in the downtown that's basically raised and you start building again. That is absolutely unheard of. The other unique thing about this building that John identified over and above his vision of having a very high-end community and uh, neighborhood was that it's the only place in Calgary, unlike the others, where you can actually have a downtown view and a mountain view at the same time. That's pretty cool. And many of us have that, if you stop and think about that. You can't get that when you get further west. So our views are absolutely amazing. And I just absolutely love the whole thing. And just coming back to what you were saying earlier about the room here, John's vision was really for it to be like a home that was a condominium. It was really built on the idea of it being a home. And I was so excited when I read this article. Too bad John's not here, because I'd love for him to hear that story. I came down immediately and looked at the condominium. And the next day, I had Rob down, and I think within about three or four days, we had purchased the unit. I completely understood it. And for us, we, uh, we waited for two years, of course, to move in. We were thrilled to death. When we told our friends we were moving here, they thought we'd lost our minds completely. And uh, they, they just didn't understand it. They thought we'd be in, in imminent danger every moment of our lives here, of course. <laughs> we're all very relieved to know that's not true. And we just absolutely love it. When we moved in two years later, our home became our complete sanctuary. It's one of these places we don't do anything when we get home. We just come home and we relax and we, we love where we live. 
And for me, what's really special about living here that I've actually become addicted to is the light. Is there anywhere that you've ever lived where you've ever had such pure and amazing light as in this particular building? So it is really special, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, at the time that we moved here, I worked at the city of Calgary in the planning department. I'm not a planner, I'm actually a social worker, but I was working on some of the long-range visioning for Calgary, and uh, so have always been involved in sort of the planning era, and understood planning and what it meant in the terms of in terms of real estate, and I've always been passionate about real estate, and so I thought at some point I just really wanted to do something differently, and I thought why not take the skills that I have in social work and move them over to real estate. Again, people thought I'd lost my mind, um, but uh, it's worked out really well and I'm so enjoying it, and so I thought tonight what I'd like to do is to take you guys through a little bit of our thinking about what's going on in the neighborhood, where this neighborhood is going, and what it might mean for all of us as owners here at Arriva. So what we're going to cover this evening is, uh, as promised, is we're going to look at the surrounding developments here. Then we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at real estate trends for Calgary, as well as for what's going on right here in our own building. And lastly, I'm going to spend some time talking about points to consider going forward uh, in, in um, sort of in response to those situation that is in front of us right now. So the terms that we're going to use tonight is that the map that I'm showing you here is Center City, as it is described. And um, as you will see here, that is the language we're going to use. I do have a pointer here. Can you see the light there? Can you guys see? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do, first of all, is this is where Arriva is, is about right there. And we are in East Victoria Crossing, according to the river, uh, to the center city. So tonight, what we're going to talk about is this east corridor of center city. So first of all, East Village. Then we're going to talk about Stampede Park and what's going on here. And then we're going to move into here, into this right around us, uh, east and west. And I also have brought with me tonight for you to have a look at later, if you choose, many of these um, plans uh, from the city, these all pertain to this area in one way or another, because we do keep getting caught up in all these different types of planning that is going on. So I brought those with me, and you're welcome to have a look at any of those after, but many of them are available online if you're interested in any of them. I think a lot of them will give you a very good idea about what we're looking at. Um, now one of the things to think about is really the zone that we are in that is sort of the universal thing to know is that we are in an entertainment zone. That really is where we live. That from the city perspective, that is what we're all about. We're in a high density, high rise entertainment zone. Okay, first we're going to talk about East Village. Now, we've been hearing lots about East Village in the last few years, and of course it was an old area for those of you who haven't been here very long, that was a very derelict, run-down area of Calgary that kind of got cut off when City Hall was built many years ago from the rest of the city. And it became sort of the dregs of society, really, in, in Calgary. And in recent years, the city has put a lot of money and effort into rebuilding um, East Village into uh, a living community, which is really, again, quite a unique thing in such a, a great location as being in the middle of downtown. So I'm just going to walk you through not all of this, but give you some of the highlights, the things that I think matter to us. Um, first of all, we have over here, this is the island that is known as St. Patrick's Island and St. George's Island, right here. And down over this side is where the zoo is. And this particular area right here, St. Patrick's Island, is where the new bridge is going to be built across here. This area is important to us. I Just a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if any of you guys were over, they did do an open house um, over at the Simmons Building about uh, what the plan for St. Patrick's Island. And uh, it really is an area that's going to be multi-use with everything from a, a beach in the summer through to tobogganing and uh, an entertainment venue, a cultural venue, many different things that are going to go on in that island. And of course, now that we have the underpass, it's really just sort of straight down the walk for us. So it becomes a very important part of this community as well, because it is within walking distance for us. And then with that, 
another one that we've been hearing about, of course, is we are getting the river walk developed. And the river walk it has this particular phase of the river walk, phase one, is now complete. Any of you have actually walked over that way. Um, and now, of course, we are moving down to the phase that comes down past here, all the way down into Stampede Park. And that's the phase two that they are now working on. And Riverwalk, of course, will really change this community tremendously that we live in because of the, first of all, the real estate that will be up against Riverwalk at some point, and also the usability and the outdoor space that we will have that we don't currently have that really is, um, you know, uh, sort of a, a closer to nature and a place where we can go and meet our neighbors and friends and uh, where you can uh, get something to eat and uh, walk and enjoy and bike and do all those sorts of things. That's a little hard for us sometimes here right now in our very urban uh, street environment, particularly with the one-way traffic that goes up and down uh, these two avenues at this point. And then, of course, we have the Simmons Building, which, um, I forgive me, I think this is the Simmons Building right here. And the Simmons Building has uh, just been purchased, but I don't think we've heard yet what is going to happen. Has anybody heard any rumors about who is moving into the Simmons building and what it's going to be used for. Does anyone know? I, I had heard that it was a restaurant. That, uh, oh, really? That, yeah, but I, I don't know. That's rumor. Yeah, nothing announced at this point. And then we have, of course, the two condominium developments here, First and Evolution. I think my impression was is that Evolution is a higher quality building than first, but again, their target market is still first-time buyers. Um, that's who they're really looking at. And uh, I want to keep that in mind as we talk more about uh, what else is happening around us. Now, of course, we've also had announced, but not yet financed, what I suspect will come soon, is the new Central Library. And we're hoping, of course, that that will be an iconic building um, that will be right behind uh, City Hall. And we're hoping that we will have something really special, but that's quite a few years out because, as I say, they don't even have the funding yet for that. And then, of course, at the front of um, so on the south end here is the King Eddie Hotel, the old music center, and of course the site of the new National Music Center, which they are in the middle of fundraising for right now. This will be incredibly important. That is seen as the gateway into East Village, but it's also a gateway into us. And uh, with it just being under the underpass there, I think it will be a tremendous, tremendous addition to our community as well as to East Village. Um, another thing that is scheduled and we're still waiting for funding for, and we've been talking about again, you've been hearing about it in the media from the mayor, is the Southeast LRT route. Now again, the LRT, forgive me, is meant to come, is the train tracks on here? It is, is it? We just along here. So the LRT is meant to cut, um, I'm just going to come over here. It's going to cut through here, and then it sort of comes down over here and then runs south. Um, so what it means is basically just across 9th Avenue, at some point there will be an LRT station there as well. So we will have another one. We sort of have the one over here in Stampede, we have City Hall and then we'll have this other one at the southeast here. So we will be really in the hub of the, uh, the transit system here for Calgary, which is really quite amazing. And then, of course, most recently opened, and I don't even have to show you that, is the 4th Street underpass, which is just opened, and uh, which is a wonderful thing that finally we are reconnected to the rest of the other side of the city. So that's Eastville. There's also supposed to be some shopping, some retail there in the center. Um, and they're certainly working on identifying who those tenants are now, but what that will be. The tricky part with that, and we've seen the same, same issue here, we're going to talk about that again in a minute, is that we don't have the critical mass. There's no one to shop. And so as much as it's nice to, you know, they, they just can't work here. And so it is that chicken and egg thing. You have to have people before you have the critical mass to, to have success in businesses here. And uh, they will have all those same issues over there because the build out is so long. It's just a very long building, uh, um, 20 years for sure. As we talk about here, and you'll see in the real estate cycle clock that they mentioned here, we only ever talk about boom and bust, right? That's, I mean, Lord knows we've had lots of that here. And, but in reality, the cycle of real estate is more complex than it, it appears. So they talk about boom. 
put on the glasses here for a minute. I don't know if they help or hinder. Um, the boom, slump on the coming down this side of the clock, and then recovery. The boom piece of the clock basically is right here. That is the boom. Now, when I'm doing quiz again, does anyone know how long a cycle, and we've seen this again and again and again and again within the Canadian market, how long a cycle lasts? And there's a range, okay? So I'll give you the points if you get. The length of the cycles in Canada have been seven being the shortest to 18 being the longest. That is correct. So the other thing that's important to know here, and we've seen you know, many of these, is of course the cycles are depending on these, these drivers, right? There's 17 drivers that are that sort of figure into how the how and when the cycle moves forward. So we are now right here. That is exactly where we are. Now the recovery phase, this is what they call recovery, is from here kind of thing up to here, right? The recovery phase is actually the one that's most difficult to predict, and it's the shortest of all those other pieces. It's the shortest phase. But we are now moving into recovery. So what recovery means is that we're moving into a balanced market where we have the right number of buyers, sellers, product. Pricing is very stable. You just get sort of inflationary kinds of increases. We are not, we are not moving. Whoops. Sorry. I'm so bad with this. I think what we're all thinking is that we're going into a boom, but we're, we're not there. We are not there. Not to say that we, I mean, again, we will boom again at some point. How, how high that will be, we don't know. But we are still not even quite fully into recovery. But we're certainly moving there. And to keep in mind that it is the shortest piece of the cycle is recovery. For you guys, some points you want to consider, I guess, in moving forward. This is some of this thing about is it going up or down or what's going to happen. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is what we really need to be aware of is that we are getting more and more and more young people. That's what's going to happen here, right? So we have two buildings going up next door that are all about entry level buyers. We have East Village over here. We have an entertainment zone going in front of us. And so I think it's going to be an incredibly vibrant area. And I think what we have to consider, I, I'm not too worried about us holding value here per se, um, but we have to recognize that there will be a limited market for people who will be able to afford to buy in this area, who are, you know, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. And so in the middle of an entertainment zone, some people love it, some people hate it. And so I think that's something that we need to think about for all of us in moving forward is, do we want to live in an area of very, very young people? Because that's what we're going to see. We do. Yeah, we do. Too. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We're good with it. We're totally good with it. But some people really don't like that. And uh, so I think that's something to think about. Then next. Another thing to, to be thinking about here, as I said, is East Village, all eyes are there. When John Tarot was developing here, he was really our guardian. He really was the person who was ensuring that this area was developed appropriately. Right now, we have, well, we have no problems going on, actually, in this photo. No one is mining the store, okay? And we've seen evidence of that already in terms of downstairs, even in our own building here, where we have space that's retail space that has really become office space. And that's something that we have to be very careful of, right? So yeah, it's kind of, sort of, but not really. It was the second floor that was meant to be office space. Downstairs is supposed to be retail. So it's those little things that are happening in this time where people aren't necessarily, there's really no vision or plan here right now. Um, for example, there, yeah, and vision, it's an office. And uh, also, for example, the, uh, the clothing, um, Joseph Ripkoff, that's really just a storage place for even the lighting store I don't really see as a retail. Another point to consider is we desperately need retail. If we don't get any, we're in trouble. Um, we have to have, now I do love to shop and I know Rob would say that was me lying on the couch, but if we don't have dry cleaners and 
Mac stores and uh, you know all those sorts of things, um, it will be very difficult to live in this community. And my advice to all of you would be, when new developments come, to ensure that that bottom layer is retail only. And that's one of the issues with the Guardian, is again, it's been developed into condominiums, right? The bottom layer is just more housing. That should have been retail. And that's the kind of advice that we need to be giving to planners when they come and ask us what we think about this. Is everything should be retail at street level. So that I would really caution you about. And last but not least is to remember that anticipation is a powerful driver. Right now, people are beginning to feel a lot of confidence about the market here and about the economy here in Alberta. Although they are still predicting, and I think they're right, we're going to see a correction in Toronto and in Vancouver in pricing, um, there's still nothing to indicate that that will happen here, that we will continue to see tremendous growth. And uh, I will tell you that um, there's something about the whole idea of anticipation that gets people really excited and they begin to, to really think about buying stuff. And so I think we're going to see people thinking of loosening up the, the strings again. We're seeing people going out to Canmore and buying property again, that kind of thing. Things that haven't been happening for a while. And even with The Guardian, what I would say is I don't really know what this community is going to look like after The Guardian is open. But I can tell you, until it opens, anticipation is a powerful driver. People will think it's great. There are more people coming. It's a very positive thing. It's seen as a great thing. We don't know what it will look like. It could be a very incredibly positive thing. We don't know that. But I can tell you, the concept of it coming is a great driver. So it is a wonderful time in terms of sort of consumer confidence. And uh, that, of course, is one of the, 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 the key drivers that we're looking for in the market. In terms of driving the market through recovery quickly, the key driver that we're looking for, that you know, if you want to watch the one story in the newspaper, it's about net migration. It's about in migration. It's about population. When we really see those stories every day, that you know more and more people moving to Calgary, moving to Calgary, moving to Calgary, that's what will drive us through that recovery side of the block and back into boom. Is that?